Typically, when using logics, you use it to apply changes to things in your world. Let's play with the position, rotation, or scale of these two colored cubes to help us learn more. In order to make logics affect the properties of these cubes, we need an inspector panel for each of them. To expose the basic parameters of any object with the logics tooltip, press and hold the grab button while your laser is over an item in this list and press the secondary action button. I want you to notice the similarities between what is shown here and what is contained within this inspector panel. Know that exposing the parameters of components works exactly the same way. So I'll grab this component here, press the secondary action button, and we're given access to all the parameters in that component. We can also display the current value of any parameter and it will update as that parameter is changed. Since we're not worried about manipulating components quite yet, I'll delete this for now. Okay, so the obvious thing that we can do right now is plug the larger cube's position into the green cube's position. If I move the larger cube with the developer's tooltip, we can see the effect of this change. Since I only plugged in position, rotating or scaling this object has no effect on the green cube. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not just grabbing this cube and moving it. Hold on to that thought. I'd rather explain that in a separate segment so your patience is appreciated. Anyhow, say that we want to do something a little fancier. Like, uh, if I move the blue cube sideways, perhaps I want to make it so that the green cube responds by going up or down. This is a case where we only want one direction to be affected, so doing this requires what are called packing nodes. These are found within the operator's category. From this, I'll pick out pack and unpack XYZ. Unpack XYZ will take a float 3 input and split it into individual float numbers. Watch what happens when I hover my tooltip over these outputs. It displays for us what will be used when this node is connected into something else. So this top output is X, the middle is Y, and the bottom is Z. If you ever wonder what an input or output is, this is usually how you can find out. We need the pack node to pack this back into a proper float3 value. So I'll just plug in the top value from our unpack and then feed this into the other box's position. Now the box is only following the other on the x-axis. I can change this so that the big box's x-axis feeds into the y-value of the smaller one to get this effect. Before we wrap this up, I need to explain a little bit about working with rotations, because they're a little bit different. You need some nodes in between to make them work. Let's assume that our goal here is to make it so that when the larger box moves, this smaller one will rotate in one direction. To make this happen, you need the from Euler node. I'm also going to grab the Euler angles node as well. And yes, it is pronounced Euler, not Euler. Don't ask me why, that's a mystery we will take to our graves. Anyways. All you need to know right now is that this node converts a float3 value into an equivalent rotation. This can then be plugged into the rotation of the smaller cube. This leaves us with a problem though. If I move this cube again using the developer's tooltip, nothing seems to be happening. It is because the conversion results in a very minuscule number. The cube is indeed rotating, but only by fractions of degrees, so of course we're not going to be able to see it easily. I'll throw in a multiply node to amplify the effect as well as give us a means of controlling the speed of the rotation.
If we wanted to do this the other way around, where rotating the object will result in movement of another, the Euler-Engels node can be used to achieve this effect.